Great. All right. This is Pedro from ANP Reacts. I'm here with Jake from Snyder. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, welcome to Toronto. Thank you very much. I, I love the start city. With that. I love the city. Uh, I saw that you went doing some sightseeing yesterday. I, I did not really do that much. The other guys did. They went to. Uh, we have a friend called Bill Hudson. Uh, he plays together with uh, Dirk Snyder, uh, uh -huh. and uh, they had a show here. Um, we were supposed to meet him up in Florida where he lives, but but uh, he got this uh, this tour. So, so uh, and then we just saw on Facebook yesterday that he was here. So we decided to meet up with him there. But I, uh, one of my best friends from Sweden, moved over here a couple of years back, and uh, so I had dinner with him and his family instead. So. Uh, uh, I went to, to um, say hi to Borja Salming, the statue outside the, outside the uh, Air Canada, Canada Center. Center. Yeah, exactly. So they have Matt Sundin, they have, uh, I'm a big hockey fan. Uh, so so you're in the right country. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would have hoped that, as we had an off day yesterday, I would have hoped that there would have been a, a, sh uh, a, a you know, um, a game, but, but unfortunately for the schedule didn't work out in your favor. No. Well, I want to ask you before we get in, into the tour, because I really want to ask you about the tour. But before that, the band. Yeah, you, you guys are drenched in talent in this band, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, um, individually, but then as a group, drenched in talent. Uh, do you guys consider yourselves a super group or just a bunch of friends? Now we don't at all consider ourselves to be some kind of super group. What, what, what we aim for, though, when we, me and Jess first started the band, was that. We wanted to have people in the band that knew what they were doing. But what we strove for were to find people that could work in a group. That we have no like individuals that are like, you know, look at me kind of figures because we, we didn't want to do that. So so the the personality was way more it, 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 it was uh, the only thing that we went for, actually. Like the personality, how to react in, in you know, within a, within within a group. A group. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then actually the talent came last. But of course, we've been in this business for so long. So, you know, everyone we know has been in the business as well. You know, like mm -hmm. the, the, the music business is really small. I was going to say it's a big world, but it's kind of small at the same yeah, time. Yeah, of course, of course. What, 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 when you got inside of the barriers or the the, the defenses or whatever you would call it, uh, you know, like everyone knows everyone. So 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 that's the thing. So so um, Alex was my first pick, literally directly. I've known him for a couple of years. We'd just been, you know, meeting each other on tours, and and they started out when I was with Camelot singing backup vocals that I mm -hmm. got to know him because he was friends with, the, uh, yeah, the band back then. And and um, Oiga was the first guy I was thinking about. He was uh, a friend of mine since five, six years. We've been working closely with him when we were with Amaranth because he's been working on record labels and so on. And he's a fantastic guitar player. And Peter was taken in uh, by Jesper because they played together in the yeah, spring. Yeah. So, so, so everything just worked out like this and we had a band. So, so yeah, we have a lot of talents. We have a lot of... Mile, mileage on our backs like when it comes to tours and so on but but uh, yeah it turned out really really well then you guys released your debut album last year yeah now that album did you get were you guys working on that album even before you signed a record deal yeah we did we did absolutely uh i mean me and jesper sat down we had a cup of coffee uh, it must have been what is now to say like, uh, 2016 somewhere along the along those lines yeah exactly and we sat down, we, I had just decided that I was not going to continue with, with our end. I said to Jesper that I don't know what I'm going to do with my career now, but probably going to do a solo album. And Jesper said that, yeah, I'm probably going to do a solo album as well. And, and we were battling back and forth about, okay, maybe you should play guitar on my album. Maybe you should sing on my album, blah, blah. And then Jesper said that, why don't we just make an album together instead of making two different albums? So that's where it all started, and we started to write songs. And and when I did my last show with Amaranth in Japan, in I think it was September or October with Halloween, 2016, more or less all the songs were done, and the official statement came out in March, and 
at the same time as my statement, but uh, we also announced a new ban. So so everything went pretty fast, but but it, but it took like a year or something to 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 put the album together. The album, like when I when I listened to the album, I felt that the name of the album, it was almost uh, connected with the album itself. Almost every song of the album almost felt like an introspect. So it felt like you guys called the album letter to myself, and it was really each song was almost you guys pouring something out there that Absolutely. you could read back to yourself later Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's exactly what happened. So, so for example, the single that we have on the album called Letter to Myself in single artist, mm -hmm. and, and it's because it's one. So what, what we did was that there's 12 songs on the album, and all these could be interpreted at, as a letter to yourself. Mm -hmm. So, so you're completely right. So all the all the lyrics are very personal from my uh, own background and Jesper's uh, own background. I mean, Jesper uh, has had a hard time fighting addiction throughout his life. Uh, he's been an alcoholic. He's sober since two years back, and and. Uh, I've had tons of problems in growing up my childhood and stuff like that. And, and, and we took our past, wrote them down, and I collected all those words and feelings and put a lot of effort into making the, the lyrics being as personal as possible. And I, I, to me, I, as a listener at home, I, it really felt that it came through. Yeah, in, in, in the music. I, I really enjoyed the album. I mean, I said to you before we even started, that uh, I, I really have a hard time deciding which which part I like the most. Do I like the guitars or your vocals. I think the album, uh, the guitars, the vocal work, absolutely incredible on the album. But then the the the, the personal touch, yeah. the lyrics to me is what brought that whole album together. Uh, thank you. I, I, I that means a lot because I was fighting a lot for the lyrics, uh, and I I actually went. Me and Jasper went to New York for almost a month to. to to record the vocals for the album, we wanted to have like a specific vibe, and uh, most of the lyrics were finalized there, because like you had so much input from the city, and uh, you know, you could see good things, you could see a lot of bad things, uh, you know, there was a lot of police sirens, and there there was there was tons of stuff that that helped me to finalize, yeah, like giving the final touch. That brings me to my next question. Was it hard for you guys to narrow it down to 12 songs? Because I'm sure when you're going through the creative process, there's going to be a lot other things, other songs that you're going to put together. Maybe We actually did not throw anything away. I think there was like one or two ideas we had that we never really finalized. Uh, so it was probably harder to stop writing songs <laughs> because like, when we were in the mood, when we were like creating the songs, we on all like we, we got in my studio on Monday and you know Wednesday we had another song ready, and then we started it again on Thursday and the next Monday we had another song ready. So so it just it just you, you know course. Jesper is the is the master of riffing. So so you're like you just give him a guitar and it's like okay here's a song okay thank you. Uh, you know, but the, the funny thing on this album was that Jesper has never ever in his whole career been doing anything, has anything to do with lyrics or, or writing song, vocal melodies or stuff like that. And for me, I have not really, you know, put that much effort in writing songs like for real, like the riffing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But on this album, it's 50-50. So there's a lot of the songs where I wrote the riff and, and uh, he wrote the song uh, vocal melody and vice versa. Uh, so so that's very interesting because that, that was going to be my next question was like how did you guys work out the dynamic between the two? Yeah, we, we sometimes it's easier for you alone to sit down and just write it because it, it, you know you just have to. Do and some of the songs style. I did, some of the songs I did, uh, but but the good thing with Jesper is that uh, I sometimes have such a bad self confidence that I write stuff and then I just think that they're they suck. But then Jesper came in and like, hey, dude, this is fantastic. Let's uh, work on this. And I was like, okay, you like this? I think it sucks. And you know, like, so he brought me up so many times. So so that was really, really cool. I, I think sometimes that dynamic is important. Yeah. The, as an artist, sometimes I believe, <coughs> and, and, I, and I see it in people who are super creative. They're so creative that sometimes they start doubting their own creativity. Yeah, but that, that, that's me in a nutshell. Absolutely. I, I just couldn't point you to the... Yes, absolutely. Yep, you did. My, uh, so following up the album, so the album comes out in October, October 20th, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, if I have the exact date. 
And then a couple of months later, Sabaton announces that you guys are coming with them on tour to North America, which I think this is the biggest tour to hit North America at this time of the year. Yeah. How, how does that come about? How does that invitation come about? <laughs> it, it, it's all about, I guess, scratching backs. Uh, I, I know you guys are all Swedes. Uh, yeah, of course. Me, me and the band has been been friends since a long time. Me and Paris, great friends when we were home. Uh, yeah. We got to know each other when I was their pirate technician wow. back in the days. And not many people know this about me, but I started my career behind the stage. Uh, so, so I used to be a pirate technician for a lot of bands. So, so I've been doing Sabaton, for, for example, I did for almost a year back and forth, like when they needed me. Um, it was not my company, I was just a pirate technician pushing the button and setting things up. And uh, I, I've been doing shows with Kiss, I've been doing uh, the Beyonce, I've been doing uh, wow. Berkeley Crew. Uh, I've been doing tons and tons of bands. Uh, and you know, you learn to know people along the way. And, and uh, uh, one of these days, you know, you try to give something back and you know, you call them up. And so, so that's what I did, I called Pyra up and I said that, hey dude, I saw that this tour was coming. Uh, you know, we're really interested if you would like to have us. And, Took a week or so when he called me back and I'm like, yeah, you're on. So, that's great. That, that must have felt good. Of course it does. Course. Uh, but now I owe him a favor. So, 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 so like, it, you always throw the ball back. So no, no, you just, you, you know, it's gonna happen down the road. He's gonna give you a call and he's gonna, he's gonna come collect you for that. Period. Of course, of course, but that's how it works, right? Yeah, so, that's, uh, it makes sense. Uh, I, I thought the, the when I saw the lineup in terms of the bands on this tour. Um, the first thing that came to mind is that all three brands bring something different to the table. Yeah, absolutely. Very different. They're all very unique in their own way. They all have their own style, if you will. So my thoughts coming in, and, and I really wanted to get your input on this, was when you found out you were going to be on that tour and you see the bands that are on that tour, were you worried about how the fans were going to take to you guys being the opening band or you just wanted to get on the road and, and showcase what you guys had done in the studio? No, 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 no. We've been doing this for so long. So, so I mean, like, there's nothing like nervous behavior or anything like that. I mean, we don't see our, see ourselves really as a new band, even though the band is new. We're just continuing on our lifestyle that we've always had for the past 15, 20 years. And so, so uh, not at all. We, 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 the only thing that we feel is that you know, like, we're honored to be on this tour. It's great to to see that big bands like Sabaton and Creator actually approve. To have us on board as a brand new band, um, but we're just doing our stuff. Yeah, we're, we're just doing our show. We're just giving everything what one thousand percent each night. We only play thirty minutes, so so actually it's a little bit unfair um, against Creator and Sabaton because they play long set. Mm -hmm. We could, you know, just drain our batteries in 30 minutes and you know like just give everything while they actually have to yeah, you know speak themselves out. yeah exactly so so that's cool but I, I really like the setup of this tour because creator is this old trash band that that you know has their way and, yeah yeah exactly mine too and, and uh, you know like they have hardcore fans in the audience doing the mosh pits and stuff like that while us and sabaton is more we're closer yes. like how we behave on stage we're uh, both us and, and, and Sabaton is having a little bit more. We add a little bit more humor to to the show, I guess. You know, like try to interact with the audience and you know smile and do crazy things and so on. And how's been the audience so far? Fantastic. Like you guys are, are at the halfway at the halfway mark, I believe. Right? I think we just passed it a couple of days. Right, a couple back. of days. Yeah, ago. yeah. We have eight eight or nine shows for us yeah so the audience has been the resp I, i've seen a lot of the response have been amazing and and i i tell the audience every night that thank you so much for staying here you know interacting with us you know listening to us throwing your hands up in the air you know singing along you know when i say hey they say hey you know like <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not that often a, 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 an opening act get that response not even on tours like this, I remember back in the days when my old band had opening acts. You know, like I feel pity for them because there was fifty people in the audience because everyone were out smoking. Yeah. You know, you know, and and on this I've been to some of those shows. Yeah, and on this tour, you know, the the, the, the place is packed. Right. Yeah, they're they're there to see us too. So, which means a lot to us. And uh, you know, we we just want you to know that we will be back again. And you know, like 
it feels like we're gaining a lot of fans. Yeah, I, I feel like the, the impression that I get is I think you guys are gaining a lot of traction, and I think this tour is helping a lot, at least on this side. Hell yeah, on this side of the Atlantic, you know. Um, I saw that you guys had some bus problems. You had some issues. You you got a little bit sick. Is, <laughs> yeah. is that? Uh, does that happen a lot when you're on? I mean, you've been on the road for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Like, I'm, time, I'm time, sure but... you've seen different things. Is, is that kind of stuff like you just like ah, it happens? It always happens. Some, you know, on one tour there's always one band that has a problem with the bus somewhere along the way. You know, you you, you can't anticipate. It. You know, like you just go. What happened with us was unfortunate because we were in Montana. We were five hours away from a city called Helena, and our generator broke down. And without the generator, we did not have any power or any heat in the bus. So all of a sudden, it was like minus 12 Fahrenheit, it's like minus 20 degrees Celsius, and it was unbearable. So we finally made it to a hotel. We tried to, you know, uh, get a repair shop to fix the car, but we couldn't do that. So we had to rent the car, get straight from Helena to. I think it was Salt Lake City, and we had to cancel the show in Boise. Um, the good news is we only missed one. Yeah, we only missed one show, yeah, but it sucked. But, but you know, like, it's unfortunate, but you can never know things like that. No, it's... it's so, and and I, I, I have a disease called, I have asthma, but I have cold asthma, which makes, as soon as it goes, like, below 15 degrees Celsius, my lungs start to fill up with mucus, and can't sing. I can't sing. No. So, so luckily for us, this day off that we had, like driving in a warm car, helped me a lot. So, I've been having some 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 issues singing. I I don't think that anyone would like notice it on stage, but but you know, like I've been spitting a lot <laughs> and stuff like that because like I have so much things that needs to come out from my lungs. But other than that, it's uh, yeah. Normally, when a tour like this is finished, like this is, is I mean, it's not a super long tour, but it is a long tour. Yeah, I love and, and 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 your guys are in North America during winter, and you you've hit some really cool places like Montana, you know, Colorado, that whole area there. Now coming to Canada, you're actually getting a little bit of a warm spell, but there's a snowstorm coming tonight. I've heard, I've heard. There's a, you guys brought the snow with you. Uh, so. Do you need time after the tour to kind of um, recharge your batteries before you you hop on to another one? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a thing. I never recharge my batteries. I'm pretty bad when it comes like that. I I also do management like back home. I um, you know work with everything that is behind the stage. What happens when when we do the, our last show in Atlanta? The day after uh, Atlanta, we fly home. We're home for one day. Then we have a headline show in Gothenburg, uh, and we are free one day and then we have another show in Sweden. So so uh, we're our our tour is continuing even <laughs> though we're flying home and the hardest thing with that will be that we have a six hour time differentials when we get home. So, yeah. so I mean we will we're gonna be jet lagged as hell when we do our show back home. Yeah you'll, you'll definitely you guys will definitely but after that after that we're actually having like most of April, March and April completely free so uh, I'm gonna take my family for some kind of vacation somewhere warm you know I, I don't Disney mind. maybe what Disney have you, have you guys gone to Disney yeah we've, no we've never been to Disney yet we were our kid is four years old so so like next year I think it's gonna be great to, to go to Disney it's so fucking expensive Disney give, give me a call yeah I love Disney though but but uh, we, we've never been there but but uh, what I I need to recharge my batteries now after this tour for sure. So I'm like two weeks at a sunny place, you know. You just need warm. Warm, yeah, yeah. Bathing, you know, sun, some 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 drinks. Yeah, some Greek island or you know like some good Bahamas or something like. That. I, I have one last question for you. Uh, 2018. What, what's in store for us, the fans? As far as you guys are concerned, tours. Uh, we're going to continue to tour this year as well. I mean, like when, now when we get home, we were focusing on the uh, the summer festival comes up. We we do um, uh, festivals in Czech Republic, uh, Finland, uh, Sweden Rock Festival, Sweden. And there are some more festival coming up that are not announced yet. And then we're probably going to go on tour in the fall again. Uh, probably, hopefully, uh, another U.S. run. Probably a, a European run. And uh, you know, we need to 
sit down and write a new album and hopefully for 2019 there will be a new album out. So, wow. so yeah. So, um, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I, um, no, 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 that was going to be my last question, but now you pique my interest with the new album. Uh, do, do you, do you guys constantly work on stuff even when you're on the road? And no, no. Or do I, you, you, you prepare some time and you set aside some time to sit down and, and do that? Sometimes we do, like, like uh, the massive addictive album for that we did for Amorant. Okay. Me and Olaf actually sat and wrote six six of the songs on the road. We had our mini studio with us, so so um, that works from time to time. But but me and Jesper has already started to to uh, put some ideas down uh, at home, and that's what we're gonna try to focus on when we get back. So for those folks watching at home, they heard here first, 2019. Yeah, I can I can tell you that it's gonna be, but but hopefully. But that's what you guys are aiming for. We're aiming for that exactly. All right. Well, the last thing I wanted to say is for those guys watching at home, if you guys come to a town nearby, if Sire comes to a town nearby, you guys gotta check these guys out. Really, don't miss the opportunity to check these guys out. Thank you. Great guys. Thanks, Thank for, you very much. thanks for your Thank, time. Thanks for having me. Take care. Yeah. See you out there.